news publications keep putting out articles about how young men are failing and flailing. They keep talking about needs, not in employment, education, or training. So this is from the Wall Street Journal. America's young men are falling even further behind. When I talk about this topic, men tend to come into my comment section getting mad at me, making personal conjectures and assertions about me. I want to remind everybody that I did not, in fact, write this article. I do not work for the Wall Street Journal. If you have any concerns or questions, I suggest you email Rachel Wolf at the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. I did not write this article. My name is not Rachel Wolf. Okay, back to the article. In Spanish, parents call it encaminado, making sure your children are on the path to independent adulthood. Out of Dan and Joanna Moreno's four grown children, only their daughter is um, encaminada. She recently graduated from business school and got engaged. The Moreno's three adult sons are still sleeping in their Miami childhood bedrooms. The younger two dropped out of college and the oldest never went. All three are single. Their only work experience is with the family business. Something has gone amiss here, says their father, Dan, who owns the repair chain Flamingo Appliance Service. We love them. We love having them around. But that is not how you build a life. The life trajectories of America's sons and daughters are diverging. Presented with a more equal playing field, young women are seizing the opportunities in front of them, while young men are Floundering, I like to say failing and flailing, but floundering is a good word as well. The phenomenon has developed over the past decade, but was supercharged by the pandemic, which derailed careers, schooling, and isolated friends and family. The result has big implications for the economy. This graph is the labor force participation rate, um, men and women. The men are the red line. The This greenish color is the women. So you see women started down here. We go through our changes. We're going up. And this dip that both sexes took was the pandemic. Women are on a higher trajectory up. So then the men's trajectory is t like down-ish. Um, if the pandemic wouldn't have happened, it would have been more across the board, but obviously the pandemic hurt everybody. It says more women ages 25 to 34 have entered the workforce in recent years than ever. The share of young men in the labor market, meanwhile, hasn't grown in a decade. As of August, 89% of this cohort of men were employed or looking for work, more than 700,000 fewer than if the current labor force participation rate was at 2004 levels, according to an analysis of the Bureau of Labor Statistics data by Aspen Economic Strategy Group Policy Director Luke Pardue. Limit, women's participation rate is up 6% percentage points in just the past 10 years to 79%. A fifth of men in the same age range still live with their parents as of 2023, according to the census, compared to women at 12%. This part, among, among non-caregivers who aren't disabled, men are more likely to be neither employed in school nor in workforce training, what economists refer to as NEAT. Around 260,000 more 16 to 29-year-old men than women fell into this category of the first half, um, for the first half of 2024. According to a think tank, um, the Center for Economic Policy and Research, representing 8.6% of young men and 7.8% of young women. Rates are up for both groups since 2019, but down from a COVID high. Sometimes people get put in the neat category who are caregivers. And that's not particularly fair because those people are still doing support work to support the household, like cooking, cleaning, taking care of people. And obviously people who are disabled have a, a valid reason for not being in the workforce. So when it's talking about non-caregivers who aren't disabled, that's saying these are able-bodied men who are just not working or not in school right now.
On my other posts where I've been talking about needs and men falling out of the workforce, I get these emotionals that show up in the comment section saying that they don't have the motivation to go to work because they don't have a family. They don't have a wife waiting for them. And this part speaks to that. The part that's cut off says, um, up until a decade or so ago, the assumption was that men just needed to show up for their life and they'll get a job and have a family and be provided for because they're men, says the University of Maryland masculinity research, Kevin M. Roy. That is a man. I did not say that. Um, he, this says, that is no longer true. While women now expect to have more and better opportunities than their mothers and grandmothers, men are in some ways bracing for the opposite. Researchers say this has created a crisis of purpose, especially for men at the entrance of adulthood. They need to create their purpose and they are not doing that well. What is going to be your purpose, guys? I don't know. You're going to have to figure that out for yourself. Roy and other social scientists cite shifts away from traditional gender roles and single earner family structures, as well as decline in traditional male-dominated industries such as manufacturing. Women, conversely, are flooding the labor market thanks in part to more remote work opportunities. The divergence isn't just economic. Young men and women are also further apart on political and social issues. Now, I just um, we've been talking about return to office. We've been talking about work from home. We've been talking about how young people are diverging in politics with men becoming more conservative, probably because of the gender roles and women becoming more liberal because women want to keep the freedoms that the feminists have fought for and won. So this is not going to be changed anytime soon. And men's purpose seems to be attached to needing to oppress women in order to feel better about themselves to be able to go to work. So I'm guessing if men can't oppress their own wife, they're just going to stay at home with their parents. So this is the percentage of people age 25 to 34 who are still living at home. So young people, 25 to 34. Um, men are at over, I mean, close to 20%. Women, 12.3% still living at home. Ladies, what age were you when you first moved away from home? I moved away from home right out of high school when I moved to, um, into my college dorm. Um, I was, what, 18, 18. I was 18 years old. How old were you? No, that's a lie. I was 19 because I was going into college. Okay, I was 19 years old. How old were you, though? The sense a lot of young men have is not being sure that they are needed or that they are going to be needed by their families, by their communities, by society, says Richard Reeves, president of the American Institute for Boys and Men, a nonpartisan research organization. So if they are not needed, they need to go back to figuring out their purpose. Their purpose has to be more than provision because we women work. Women work. The graph shows that women go to work. Women know how to maintain a home. Women leave the home. So what are they going to do to be needed? Um, women have been telling them, but they don't want to listen to us. <laughs> All right. One of the first clues popped up a few years ago when educators began sounding the alarm on high school boys plummeting college attendance rates. Now that this cohort is in their 20s, their feelings of aimlessness are spilling into the social media and professional realms. And the wild thing is you get on social media and they want to denigrate women in our education, but they are the ones that are failing and flailing without it. All right, take Don and Joanna Moreno's middle son, 25-year-old Daniel, who left college midway through his sophomore year after indecision about his major spiraled into a larger existential crisis. I felt so, so lost, Daniel said. I didn't know what I was doing it for. Five years later, he is still living with his parents and working for his dad's company in a product manager role that he is grateful for, but he doesn't necessarily see a future in. And then I'm going to skip down to this part. Nothing is really stopping me. It's just myself standing in my own way. So they know it's them. It's a them problem, but they don't know how to fix it because for so long they have had it on, they had a trajectory. And now that women can do for ourselves and we don't necessarily need to get married to survive, they don't know how to 
function. And they're going to, them and maybe some men that are older than them are going to have to help them craft their purpose because women are not going back under the boot of patriarchy. We're going to keep pushing forward to make sure that we have freedoms, opportunities, and so that our daughters do as well. Join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Last month, I posted this video that I titled Rising Numbers of Prime Age Men Not Engaged in Work, Job Search, or Education. This post got hundreds of comments. A lot of them were whiny. A lot of them were personal attacks at me as if I'm the one that wrote the article. Um, a lot of them were just blame shifting and um, it, it was just kind of sad. And so since so many of these men were really sad in my comment section, I feel like y'all need to see some of these comments. So that's what this video is. Some comments of men who are upset as if I'm the one that wrote this article, as if I'm the one that has a job and I'm just choosing to not hire them. So Bruce K says of me in our community, so this is basically just red pill for women because me talking about articles and what's going on with them means that I am a red pill woman. And this person, Jim, Jim Hora, I don't know what that says, says fresh and fit for women to be precise, driving a wedge between the sexes for money because men dropping out of the workforce and talking about it is a wedge issue. But it is kind of a wedge issue because if these men are not working, why are women going to be bothered? So Combat Kool-Aid says, as a guy who's saying nope to jobs is really not that complicated, make it worth it to work, record GDP while stagnant wages my whole life. I'm pretty much only down to work for the government nowadays since private sectors has overplayed their hand. These men live in a world where they don't think that women are impacted by stagnant wages or anything like that. They just don't want to work. So for me, I was like, as long as no one else has to work extra to make sure you have food, shelter, and clothes, that's fine. Y'all can not work. I just want women to avoid y'all. So I'm not sure what his name really is, but I see reject right there. So we'll just refer to him as a reject. He says, judging by a lot of folks' comments, maybe people would prefer gender segregation. I'm not threatening. I'm saying we need to be consistent. Too many men and women are out for gendered revenge rather than justice. If that's the case and the mission is revenge over helping us rebuild ourselves, let's walk, let's walk our collective talk. And I said to that, nah, not revenge. Women don't want to harm men. Women want to live, thrive, and be happy. And that is not possible with these unproductive people. We are looking to stay away from these types that are parasites. Hope that clears things up. And this person, he rejects, talked about help um, over helping us rebuild ourselves. Men have never faced the type of um, gendered oppression that women have faced. Women are not going to help them rebuild our, rebuild themselves because what they really want is women to get back under their boot, and that's not going to happen. So men are going to have to figure out their purpose without thinking that they automatically get a wife and a family simply because they have a job. They're going to have to find some motivation outside of that. Hemlock says, college is anti-men, feminist, Marxist propaganda. Of course men don't want to go. And I just need to know how he knows this, considering many of them don't even go to college and stick and stay and graduate. Like, how do you know? Uh, just continue to just, you know, flail and flail if you don't want to go to college. Um, and Autumn Aphrodite agrees. She says, please stay away. Leave the country. I'm still waiting for you children to go your own way. OK, so Kyra says, imagine forcing the world to believe it's a man's world only for you to fall short by your own metrics embarrassing. And then Halo for Beat says, your comment is giving, I was burnt by a man. So now I hate all men type of vibes. And what's wild is about that is you can tell that he really dug into comprehending what was going on in the subject matter. And he came out with, you know, this comment that is really reflective of comprehension and everything. It's wild. Men should leave the West. You women can have it. Russia has opened up immigration to Western conservatives, Christians, and conservatives should just let the West collapse. As soon as the men abandon this place, someone will attack the United States, probably China or Iran. China has no women, and you Western women will be a boon to their society. 
<laughs> all because some men don't want to work. So this is what should happen. These men should just leave the West. Okay. I hope the men take this instruction and just go ahead and go. Go to Russia. More nonsense that had nothing to do with the article. Western women are not marriage material. Go overseas, you see real women with queen and princess of nature qualities. This was a comment by itself. He, he was not commenting on anything. This was on the actual post that is about men not being in work, um, education, or training. <laughs> Marie says, men are just opting out of a system that has zero benefits to them. Easy as one, two, three. You ladies can now do the hard, rough, and dangerous jobs that keep society functioning. Strap on those work boots and grab your hard hats, girls. Checkmate. <laughs> All right, so Maurice, just because... You know, some men are falling out of the workforce doesn't mean that all men will, because some men actually know that they need to go to work to eat and live. So y'all can fall out of the workforce. We just need women to know and understand who you are as to avoid you. Dark Soul Queen says, you women talking trash, but y'all have yet to build a military force and your economy is falling apart. Dummies, don't make go down deeper the rabbit holes. Uh, and hold up. And this is the edited version. So I can just imagine what the real version is. Um, women aren't the ones that are sending men off to go to war. Men, uh, men are the ones that are starting wars and keeping that up. Men are still in charge of countries and these economies. This is not on us. We're just literally going to work. Anthony says, I think there needs to be recognition that many colleges and universities became inhospitable to men. Why would men want to connect with an academic community when we are told that men are toxic, responsible for virtually all crime, and they are responsible for virtually all crime, that, that's, that's numbers, and that we are part of this mysterious patriarchy that must be smashed. I mean, the patriarchy is patriarch. What is patriarch? We, we literally have a patriarchy. Um, how about the many teachings which suggest that men are nothing but selfish and desirous of oppressing others and inherently privileged? I mean, that goes along with patriarchy. Yes, we have to squash that. For the young men who have struggled their entire lives and never had any breaks, hearing these teachings and watching women embrace them wholeheartedly is a turnoff. There is a whole lot more going on here than men being lazy. Part of the solution must involve academic institutions becoming more welcoming, rejecting hate speech is not hate speech i'm sorry and stop denigrating men overall society overall does not benefit when men and women suffer um yeah he has an opinion but literally if you don't want to go to college don't go to college you still got to go to work so you're gonna have to figure something out okay so the black man myth legend he he wrote a long comment i will just do part of it he says i am a man let me tell you what probably is happening some of them can see the writing on the wall, seeing their friends or family lose it all in divorce. They're not losing it all. Women pay into marital assets. Women get some of the marital assets in divorce. People really need to know and understand that marriage is going to be split. It, I mean, marital assets will be split. Learn how contracts work. Seeing how badly women treat them. I mean, obviously, that's, <laughs> that's subjective. Seeing how bad the economy is. A how probably even if they work hard, they will never get a family or a wife that respect them. This this goes back to them thinking that going to work means that they are supposed to get a family. And that's not how life works. No cookie, no, no success, no reward. OK, not worth breaking your neck. That, that's the thing. They believe that they're just they deserve something extra. Like literally you get your paycheck, take your paycheck and go home like everybody else. Prepare for the worst recession that will break jobs even for women that you never saw or at least stagflation. Okay, women know and understand that this economy is jacked up, but we're still opting to go to work. Um, maybe the money from the baby boomers when they will give their houses to their sons will give them some growth and see women have babies with those guys, but the rest will do just what is happening in China, laying flat. So they need to be given something. They need to be given a house in order to get a get women to have some babies. <sighs> Why? Why can't they just go out and get it on their own? All right, y'all. I'm done with Black Men Myth Legend. I'm done with all of these whiny comments. Um, I just needed to show y'all how these people make excuses and whine in my comment section. 
Join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Nonsense.